in the last several classes we have looked at uh, dc dc conversion that is transforming one dc voltage to another and importantly with high power efficiency that is without wasting a lot of power in the process and we did that by first of all mainly using lossless components switches and l's and c's you need the switches because somehow you need to have uh, time varying waveforms to feed to the lc filter which have different average voltages okay uh, so with this we were able to uh, get one dc voltage from another and uh, how much the dc voltage is transformed by that ratio was determined by the duty cycle we also implemented a negative feedback loop to adjust the duty cycle so that you control the output voltage to be equal to the desired voltage okay otherwise you get a certain ratio and if the input voltage changes uh, the output voltage will also change now with the negative feedback control loop that doesn't happen right so even if the input voltage changes if the input voltage increases eventually the negative feedback loop will reduce the duty cycle so that the output voltage remains as it should be so we will have a tutorial in which we'll uh, have more questions related to the dc dc converter and its calculations now we'll switch gears a little bit and uh, try to address another problem which is also frequently encountered and this will lead us to some more parameters of the op amp that we have not discussed so far so far to us an op amp is described by what what is the what are the parameters of the op amp gain that the dc gain is one thing that you need just to know how accurate it is and then the gain bandwidth product or the poles basically the frequency response of the op amp okay now actually we'll leave the frequency response part aside and look at only the dc performance that is the low frequency performance okay and see what else can cause inaccuracies when you want to measure certain kinds of things with op amps okay so the specific problem is this if i have a voltage source okay one of whose terminals is grounded and i want let's say some multiple of it we know how to do this right how would you go about doing this what should i do yeah put an op amp where i mean what's the block called i mean i am not big on names but you know the standard topologies right so the standard non inverting amplifier will do this now let's say the problem is uh, slightly different you have two voltages somehow i'll give you some motivation for this this is actually great this circuit right in that first of all it has infinite input impedance infinite input resistance dc so it doesn't draw any current from the source vi and so on so it's very nice and if the op amp has high enough gain it also gives you accurately k times vi so this uh, let's say the problem is different what i want is there are two voltages with respect to the common ground of the circuit and i want to get k times vp minus vm okay so tell me how i would should do this you understand the problem right so uh, i don't have vi with respect to ground i have two voltages vp and vm with respect to ground and i want the output must be what is known as single ended that is the output must not be you can't say this is the output right then it's i already have vp minus vm that's not what i mean i want the output with respect to ground okay so between this node and common ground i need to get k times vp minus vm so use all the op amp circuits that you know and give me suggestions of how i might do this hey, what are the things that you would need Yeah, you can use any number of options. Yeah. Huh. 
Okay. So, uh, first of all, I think you have correctly recognized that we have uh, one voltage multiplied by positive number, the other one by negative number. So, you need to have a non inverting structure somewhere and an inverting structure somewhere to get the plus k and minus k and so on. Okay. But I did not completely understand the scheme. So, what should I do? I have some non inverting amplifier here. Then, okay. Something. Let's not worry about the values of resistors. Let's assume that they can be set correctly. Then, so now between these two, I could get k times Vp minus Vm. But that's not what I wanted, right? I wanted it with respect to ground. So what should I do? Wait, wait. wait. Yeah, okay. So, you are saying that uh, you will now use a summing amplifier, is it? Will this work? This is what you mean, right? So, you get somehow you get plus k v p minus k v m and then add up the two, okay. And this inverting uh, this uh, summing amplifier itself inverts, but that is okay. I could call this v p and that v m and that is fine. Is this okay? So the idea was, I mean, I want k times Vp. If you just break down the expression kvp minus kvm, it is uh, plus kvp plus minus kvm. So first you get plus kvp by using a non-inverting amplifier, then minus kvm using an inverting amplifier, and add the two using a summing structure. Okay. So this is functional. Uh, what were you saying? No, no, V p minus V m appears here already, right. So, again I could not quite understand the scheme. So, you want to connect a resistor between these two then. Oh, yeah, that is correct, yeah. I mean you do not need a resistor for it, right. You voltage across these two nodes is V p minus V m. No, no, I mean now you want to have the power supply of the op amp to be some time varying. V p and V m themselves are signals, right. I mean I kind of get what you are suggesting. Somehow if I could call this 0 and call this V p minus V m and then use the regular op amp stuff. So, essentially this V voltage V m becomes the ground of the circuit, right. So, we cannot do that that is what I am saying. So, we need to have this to be the ground and we have V p and V m with respect to ground of the circuit. You can add Vm. Which one? So you're talking about this node here, or here, in this one, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you mean here, right? Okay. Okay. So one suggestion is why use like multiple op amps the same op amp can be configured in uh, inverting or non inverting and you use both inputs simultaneously that was your suggestion also. Yeah, so that kind of makes sense because we are all after all talking about linear circuits if you get uh, plus V p using a structure and minus V p by applying the input elsewhere and then you can uh, with those things get uh, V p minus V m times something perhaps with uh, appropriate adjustment of components. Okay. Now, of course, advantage of that over this is you have fewer op amps. right? Any other suggestions? Good. I mean, I am uh, glad that you are able to synthesize circuits. Yeah. We got V p plus V m by 2. 
Yeah, one second. So, if you do this, I think what you said is uh, this one. What will be this voltage? It will be V p plus V m by 2, right. Any other suggestions? Okay, how? Yeah, so one other possibility is uh, also that. So, let us say V p and V m and here I get minus V m and then uh, sir sorry. something like this. Again, I think I will get minus V p plus V m, but anyway that is a detail. Okay. Is this fine also? Okay. Huh? So, I think he got minus V m and then added V p and minus V m that is all that is fine also right. No, no, no. These voltage sources are again. These voltage sources are models for uh, some circuits that come before. Okay, it's not a voltage source with two terminals which you can hang anywhere. Any other ideas? Okay. Now, where is minus V m? Uh, that is what is done here, right. So, V p V m is inverted to get minus V m, okay. Uh, he is already uh, has the patent on that. So, you have to pay royalty, what can I say, <laughs> okay. But do you see any problems with uh, this circuit, for instance? I mean, now, think beyond the DC gain, is there could there be some problems? I mean, in this one? In this one, actually, it is not a problem. If the what is the input resistance seen by VP? It's the resistance that's connected there, right? And the input resistance seen by VM is this one. So if I arrange those two to be equal, they'll be the same. Actually, that's an important thing. Although we are saying VP and VM, we want the difference. It's not only with ideal sources, right? The sources could be non-ideal. So that means that typically in these cases where I say I want a, I want to take the difference between two voltages. I want the input resistance at the two inputs also to be the same. Okay. So, but in this case, they can be made the same. Okay. In the other one, it's harder because uh, in the very first one, this is this has infinite resistance and this has one, and that of course, if you want to fix it, you can deliberately load something so that it does that. Okay. What else could be a problem? Yeah, absolutely. So, that is actually a very important thing also. So, from V p to V m, it is going through just one op amp and it is associated bandwidth limitations and so on. Okay. And from V m to the output, it is going through two of them. Okay. Just for simplicity, if you assume each of these stages to have the same bandwidth, the response from V p to the output will be different from V m to the output. Right. So, roughly speaking, let us say we, we are looking at uh, if the response from V p to the output is second order, response from V m to the output is fourth order. So, it will be different. Okay. At least let us not worry about calculating it now, but you can see that uh, V m is first bandwidth limited by this and then further by this one, whereas V p goes through only one. So, there is asymmetry here also. Okay. That is a problem. And in the other uh, circuit, if you look at this 3 op amp structure, I can fix the input resistance by probably doing this, okay. but still it does have a finite input resistance that itself is a problem, whereas for this it was great. Okay. So, that also is a problem that we may want to tackle. Okay. So, but now let us pick like we had like many ideas. So, obviously, which is the most efficient one which you want, you want to pick. The three ideas that were suggested, okay, maybe somebody else should answer. So, which idea would you pick? Huh? Which one? The one with two op amps, why? That is true, but uh, there was also a suggestion with only one op amp, right? 
maybe I mean I did not describe it completely. So, the idea was this actually this inverting and non inverting I think I have mentioned this in class they are not that different from each other. Okay. And this I think also has been uh, uh, done in the tutorial. Is there any similarity between these two? So, all actually they are in fact the same circuit except I do not have the input here, I have the input over there. Okay. Is this fine? So, clearly the idea was that I mean the same circuit if you apply the input here you get a positive weight, if you apply the input over there you get a negative weight. Okay. So, since you can get both positive and negative from the same circuit. I could do that right V p and V m. What is it that I am going to get at the output? What will I get? What is the expression for the output? Yeah, u. We will get V p minus V m or what is it that we will get? I mean they you can add the two what is the weight for V p? 1 plus r 2 by r 1 and then minus v m times r 2 by r 1. Okay. So, this is not great I mean not great meaning actually it does not work at all because I wanted v p minus v m times some number. So, the idea is nice in that it uses only 1 op amp, but the how do I fix this now? Yeah. So, that seems like the easiest solution right v p is getting multiplied by a larger weight. So, So, if I do that, what should be those resistors? Same resistors actually will work, right? So, what should this be? R1 or R2? That is the correct thing, is not it? So, this can also be written like this which is how it is normally drawn it also looks vaguely symmetric. What will be the voltage here at this node V p times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 and that gets multiplied by the non inverting amplifiers gain. Okay, from this point to the output it is a non inverting amplifier right and from this point to the output it is an inverting amplifier. Okay. So, what is the output now? Huh? Yeah, it is V p minus V m. So, basically this instead of V p times 1 plus R 2 by R 1 it became R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times that whole thing. Okay. So, R 1 plus R 2 cancels off and you get R 2 by R 1. Is this okay? Yes or no? So, essentially this is a combination of uh, inverting and non inverting amplifiers with a resistive divider. So, that we get equal weights for the two and if you draw it like this it looks like a new impressive circuit, but it is something that you know right. Any questions about this?
Is this fine? Huh. Which one? This one. Oh, this is, uh, I mean, at this point I get some plus k 1 times v p, k 1 can be set by the resistor ratio. At this point I get minus k 2 times v m and at this point I will get uh, k 1 times v p minus k 2 times v m times some yet another k 3. I mean I can always adjust k 1, k 2, k 3, so that you get equal weights for the plus and minus right. I, I did not discuss it further because we were not going to use it, but you can always do that. Any questions about our uh, circuit? So, I started off by showing this and saying that this amplifies the input voltage V i and if I have to amplify the difference between two voltages, this is the circuit I would use. Okay. What problems do you see or what differences do you see? What is that? Power. Why? What about the power? No, I mean just in uh, how it treats the input, how the two circuits treat the input. Yeah, so I mean this uh, this does not draw any current from the input, this draws current from the input that also we will fix. Okay. How do you fix that? Huh? How do you fix that actually? What will you do? I mean if you are trying current from the input, what will you do to fix that? What is it that you need? Buffer. Yeah, you just buffer it and then. So, you could uh, if necessary do something like this this is uh, remember this is the same as the non inverting amplifier except the gain is 1. So, you do not need the resistors or anything any path through ground. Okay. This will work and uh, from what we have discussed about the op amp so far that is it there is no difference between this and uh, anything else that we, we may want, but again even for DC it turns out that our description of the op amp is incomplete. Okay. So, which is why we cannot this is not the preferred way of uh, doing it there is it needs like a little bit of further enhancement. Okay. Before we go there any questions about this thing? I mean if I could just give you this circuit and analyze it I think you can especially DC transfer function you should be able to analyze with ideal op amp in no time. But I was also trying to tell you how it is basically a combination of inverting and non inverting amplifiers. Okay. So, there is some common ground to the circuit, and we have the op amps inputs and outputs. What is the model of the op amp we have used so far? Huh? Voltage control, current source. Voltage control, voltage control, voltage source. So, what is the controlling voltage? Hmm? The difference between these two, right? V E. Okay. And we said that V naught is some a naught times V e, where a naught is a large number and so on. Okay. But, uh, this is a complete description. So, let me just show some other circuit. Remember the op amp there are two input terminals right and each of them has some voltage with respect to ground. I am deliberately not writing this as an op amp. Okay. So, let us say you had a linear circuit like this, there are two terminals to which uh, voltages V a and V b are applied and a third terminal at which you get the output. 
So, what do you expect the general form of V naught to be? Yeah, so it will be a linear combination of V A and V B. Okay. So, given this, is there something special about the op amp? Something special that we have assumed? Huh? Yeah. So, what have we assumed? Yeah. So, we assume that alpha is minus beta or alpha plus beta is zero. Okay. Now this is what we want we actually want the op amp to amplify only the difference between the two inputs but it turns out this is not exactly the case okay it will also have uh, in general this is not quite right so if this is va and vb the op amp's output would be alpha times va plus beta times vb okay ideally we want alpha equals minus beta equals a naught right but it turns out this is not exactly true of course it is kind of close alpha plus beta will be close to zero otherwise the op amp is worthless okay but it's not exactly zero and it causes some problems as we'll see is this clear so the op amp we wanted to amplify only the difference voltage between the two inputs v a and v b that is why we go on writing a naught times v e and so on, but it turns out I mean just from uh, looking at the general structure given that there are two separate inputs to ground and you have a third voltage which you call the output. If you apply an input here and input there you will get an arbitrary linear combination and the weights are not necessarily exactly opposite of each other. Okay. We design our circuits as you will learn if you take analog circuits that we design our circuits and try to do this. We try to get equal and opposite weights for V A and V B, but we will not succeed completely. Okay. So, the two weights will be very nearly so, but not exactly. Okay. So, we have to analyze this. Now, uh, one way to do it could be simply to find the values of alpha and beta. Right? You have an op amp and you apply an input to one, you apply the input to the other, because we are still assuming linear behavior. So, somehow we can get uh, the values of alpha and beta. But that is not a very good description as it turns out, because alpha and beta are both large numbers opposite of each other and so on. So, there is a better way of doing that and that is to decompose V A and V B into what is it that we want to amplify? The difference. Okay. So, I have called it V E, so but the using the usual terminology let me call it V D and this is known as if you have two voltages, this is the differential or difference component or the differential voltage. Okay. And I can define another quantity, I will call it V C M, I will define that it is V A plus V B divided by 2. Okay. So, what I am saying is I have two voltages V A and V B instead of looking at those voltages individually, I will look at the difference voltage V D or V E and I will look at the average voltage V A plus V B by 2. Okay. And the two are equivalent descriptions, you understand what I mean is I mean uh, the analogy is the following I mean you have uh, in the two dimensional space you can describe any point with its x and y coordinates right the unit vectors, but you do not have to choose the unit vectors like this you could have chosen them in any other direction best to choose orthogonal ones, but you could choose any which way you want. So, this is similar any two voltages you can either specify the individual voltages or you can specify their sum and difference. Okay. The two are equivalent descriptions and the reason why the sum and difference makes sense for us is for us the desired part is the difference the sum part is the undesired one. Okay. So, we can look at them uh, separately like that and we ideally do not want any response to the sum part the average part and we want the response to the high response that is a large gain for the difference part. So, that is why we decompose it like this. Okay. It is not that the other thing cannot be done, but it is just too messy and annoying. Okay. Is this clear? So, given any voltages this is done actually very frequently in uh, uh, circuits and many other cases also. Uh, 
say given V A and V B, I will define the differential voltage or the difference voltage. and what is known as the common mode voltage basically it is the average voltage. Defined by V C M. Okay. And given the differential voltage and the common mode voltage, we can get back the original voltages. How do you do that? Please give me expressions for V A and V B in terms of V D and V C M. V C M plus half V D and this is V C M minus half V D. Okay. So, if you have two voltages the common part is the common mode and the part that goes equal and oppositely from each other is the differential part okay. and you will see that actually lots of circuits are analyzed like this and not only this actually you do analyze many other in many other fields also. Sometimes you uh, describe the or sometimes you calculate the response to the average and the differential parts differently right. You may have solved physics problems where uh, you have unequal forces pushing on some rod and so on. Have you done this? Uh, so, what do you do? The common mode part just translates it, the differential part rotates it, right. So, it is similar. So, this kind of thing uh, decomposition is very common, okay. Uh, you have uh, two different things and in a different space you can uh, visualize them very nicely. So, that is the idea. No, no, no. What, what, what is that? Uh, yeah. No, no. This is the response of the op amp by itself. The feedback when you apply feedback around the op amp, the response of the uh, op amp itself doesn't change. Okay. The input you apply somewhere and the output you take probably at the output of the op amp that will have some appropriate characteristics. What I mean is, I mean, even without this alpha, beta, etc. The op amp by itself, I say if I have an error voltage V e, the output voltage will be A naught times V e. Okay. Now, let me apply feedback and turn this into a non inverting amplifier. Now, if you calculate the sorry, this is V i and this is V o, the response from V i to V o will depend on the feedback network, but the response from V e to V o is just a property of the op amp. Okay. And similarly, even when you have V A and V B and different uh, numbers alpha and beta, it is exactly the same. Okay. What you want is the desired function that you want to synthesize is this. And in fact, now we will see what happens because of unequal values of alpha and minus beta. Okay. Is this fine? So, because the op amp has two inputs and it does respond slightly differently to the two inputs. The symmetry is not perfect. It has actually got to do with uh, matching between uh, two parts of uh, the circuit inside the op amp and it is never perfect. So, you will have something like this okay. and some other reasons also. So, now instead of uh, describing it with uh, the output voltage I said is alpha times V A plus beta times V B. Okay. Instead of this I want to write it as something times V D plus something times V C M. So, please give me these coefficients. You understand I am not going to use V A and V B anymore. I want individually measure the inputs to the op amp. I will measure the difference voltage at the inputs of the op amp and the common mode voltage or the average voltage at the inputs of the op amp. So, please tell me what the ratio is. What is the coefficient of uh, V D the difference voltage? alpha minus all you have to do is substitute these things there. Okay. So, you will get alpha minus beta by 2 and here alpha plus beta. Okay. And this in turn has like in terms of different names 
I will call it A D times V D plus A C M times V C M. This is known as the differential gain and this is known as the common mode gain. Okay. This is okay. I just define two other constants instead of alpha and beta, I will use this. So, what should be the value of ACM ideally? 0, it should have no response to the average voltage, it should only respond to the difference, but in reality that is not 0. So, that way I mean you now also see why it is easier to do it this way. You want a large A naught, A naught is A D right, the differential gain is A D that is all. So, you want a large A D and 0 A C M, in reality you will get some non zero A C M and that is a non ideal feature of the op amp that we have to deal with. Is it ok? So, in summary the op amp responds to the two inputs slightly differently and the way we deal with it is we say that it responds to the differential voltage with a high gain as desired, but it also responds to the average voltage with a small, but non zero gain okay, and we have to study the effect of that. So, now let us do that uh, this is a like very routine circuit analysis problem. So, we had our difference amplifier let us say they are driven by ideal voltage sources that we are not concerned with now only difference is this op amp it has a differential gain of A D and a common mode gain of A C M. Okay. Please derive the expression for V naught, what did we want V naught to be? If A D was infinity and A C M was uh, 0, actually only one of them is necessary I think, what should V naught be? R 2 by R 1 times V p minus V m. Okay. So, now the differential gain is not infinity and the common mode gain is not 0, please derive the expression for the output. Okay. Now, I mean do not get uh, too messy with the calculations, first what is this voltage? This is V a right, what is that voltage? V p times R 2 by R 2 plus R 1 what is that voltage V b? Huh? Same, no, no that is with an ideal op amp with infinite gain that is not the case. So, you would the way to do it is through this resistive divider right. So, what is that? Yeah, so you know that I mean the usual resistive divider stuff this gets multiplied by that resistance and that one by this it is a superposition of voltages from the two sides that will be V p times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 plus V o times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. Okay. This is this okay or no? I mean or does this expression look mysterious? It should be fine. So, now you know V A and V B. So, from that you calculate V D and V C M and use this, then you write the expression for V O as a function of V P and V M, just a couple of lines of algebra I think. So, I had made a mistake, I had written P here, this is M. So, this is like very routine algebra just that there are many terms and slightly messy looking expression that is all. So, the output of the op amp as always is the differential gain times the differential voltage plus the common mode gain A C M times the common mode voltage and 
the differential voltage what is it? It is the difference between this and that. Okay. So, the differential uh, voltage is V p minus V m times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 minus V naught times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 okay. and the common mode voltage is So, I will get A d times V p minus V m R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 minus A d times V naught by R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 plus A c m times these terms. So, I also wrote uh, I mean I also grouped this V p minus V m together here because that is what we wanted also right. This is in fact V p minus V m is the difference of the inputs that you apply to the circuit and V p plus V m by 2 is the common mode of the inputs you apply to the circuit. It should have responded only to this. Now, you can see if A d is infinity clearly these terms will overwhelm those terms only that will remain right. So, if the op amp happens to have gain of infinity which it can never in reality the value of A c m does not matter okay. and similarly if A c m is 0 again it goes away at least the response to V p plus V m goes away. The response to V p minus V m may not be exactly R 2 by R 1 it may be slightly different from that that we know right even the non inverting amplifier does not have a gain of exactly k it will have k by 1 plus k by a naught and so on. So, it is similar. So, now if I take all the terms containing V naught to the other side, what will I get? Okay. Now, what I will do is I will uh, divide the numerator and denominator by this and also by A D. Okay. I will get this is ideally what I should have got. Okay. Okay. AC by no no I mean some of the denominator is this correct actually some of
Huh. Yeah, okay. That's fine. You mean this coefficient is not here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, what I was looking for is this. Okay, that should be there. Remember, this term should be similar to k by a naught. Okay, if you go back to your non inverting amplifier with finite gain, the loop gain is a naught by k. So, that k by a naught was what I was looking for because I got 1 by a d, I got a little confused there. Okay. So, now we have this extra stuff because of it. This is the response to the difference V p minus V m, but that is not all. We have V p plus V m by 2 response to the average voltage and we will have also R 2 by R 1 and here we have A c m by A d divided by the same denominator. Okay. So, what do you see here? As expected, we wanted to make a difference amplifier that responds only to V p minus V m, but it also responds to the average value. Okay, And how much is the response? That response is proportional to A c m by A d. Okay. So, either you make A d infinity which we cannot do or you make A c m much smaller than A d to avoid this problem. Okay. What is the problem really? Okay, It responds to the average value. What is the big deal? Why would this be even an issue? Huh? <laughs> exactly, that is a problem. So, the response to average means that if the input was 1 volt or rather let us say the many times you want to measure like very small differences, but the average value can be very high. Like one example is, so let us say you have a high voltage supply and you have some load. One of the ways of measuring load currents which is actually very important information, you can use that to feedback and do many things is to put a very small resistor in this and then measure the difference voltage. Okay. Now, remember if this is 100 volts, this could be 100 volts and this is 100 volts minus 10 milli volts, okay. but the average value is almost 100 volts. So, if it responds to the average, you have a problem because the response to the 10 milli volts will be drowned out by the response to the 100 volts average. Okay. Even if A c m by A d is small, let us say V p minus V m, you want this to be, you want to measure difference of 10 milli volts and if this is 100 volts, okay, what do you have to make A c m by A d so that the response to this is very small? Huh? Yeah, it has to be much smaller than the ratio of the voltages 10 to the minus 4 or something. right? So, this is 10 to the minus 2, this is 10 to the 2. So, this has to be much smaller than 10 to the minus 4. So, maybe it should be 10 to the minus 6 or something, 10 to the minus 5 at least at most, so that you get this. So, this is a problem. Okay. So, this denominator is all detailed. This term you should recognize. This is the same as k by a naught that you get when you analyze feedback circuits. This is due to the loop gain and you get some modification because of ACM, okay. but this is not a big deal. This being in the denominator is not the big deal. The big deal is ACM by AD is multiplying the common mode voltage. So, this is why one of the parameters that are specified in the op amp is what is known as the common mode rejection ratio. Basically, this is the ratio AD by ACM. Okay. So, if you look at the op amp data sheet, this term common mode rejection ratio will be there and what that specifies is AD by ACM. And sometimes this AD by ACM itself depends on frequency that we won't deal with now. You will also see some frequency response curve of AD by ACM, okay? Because if you have higher frequencies, this AD by ACM may not be as large as what you want it to be, okay? As not as large as a DC, okay? So that also varies with frequency. So you can see why this is a very important thing. So when you want to measure differences, the average value can also make the circuit respond. The circuit also responds to the average value. So, now if the average value happens to be much more than the difference and this is actually a very common scenario in lot of instrumentation and sensor like applications. You have two large numbers and you want to take the difference between them. You know actually you all run into even algebra I mean arithmetic problems when you have two large numbers and take difference right. Especially when the difference appears in the denominator. You must be familiar with this is not it. To take uh, the difference between two large numbers 
to get an accurate measurement of the difference is very difficult. Okay. Like a small error in the measurement of each quantity can give you a very, very large error in the difference. Okay. So, in general that is a difficult thing and here also it is somewhat difficult. Okay. So, so, please think about these things we will uh, uh, discuss it further and also we will improve the circuit, so that it has infinite input resistance and so on.